and sight. Health to the sick in mind, sight with illusions blind. Now to all humankind, let there be light. Spirit of truth and love, life giving all Let there be light. Holy and blessed dream, glorious trinity, wisdom, love, light, boundless as ocean's tide, rolling in fullest pride through the earth, far and wide. Let In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Happy Sunday to you all, and thank you for making the Lord's Day holy by taking part in our Mass today. This is the fourth Sunday of Ordinary Time. We're getting through them, it seems very fast. And today, in the Gospel, we move on from Jesus calling his first disciples to his first miracle. It's a very dramatic moment, sort of echoes what we sang in that opening hymn, Christ, who once came to bring healing and sight, health to the sick in mind. But the dramatic miracle of the gospel, perhaps, is not so much the point of the story. The point is contained in one word that we hear mentioned more than once, authority. That idea that Jesus does what he does and says what he says with an authority that comes directly from God. As we think about the authority of Jesus, we're invited to think how we respond to that. As we begin our Mass, we think of the times when perhaps we haven't let the Word of Jesus guide our lives, when we've wandered into sin, when we've made errors, when we've been frail and fallible. Let's ask for the gift of forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honour you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like myself from among yourselves, from your own brothers. To him you must listen. This is what you yourselves asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly. Do not let me hear again, you said, the voice of the Lord my God, 
nor look any longer on this great fire, or I shall die. And the Lord said to me, All they have spoken is well said. I will raise up a prophet like yourself for them, from their own brothers. I will put my words into his mouth, and he shall tell them all I command him. The person who does not listen to my words that he speaks in my name shall be held answerable to me for it. But the prophet who presumes to say in my name a thing I have not commanded him to say, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, bring out our joy to the Lord. Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come before him giving thanks. With songs let us hail the Lord. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Pardon not your hearts. Come in, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the God who made us. For he is our God, and we the people who belong to his pasture, the flock that is led by his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, pardon not your heart. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day at Massa in the desert, when your fathers put me to the test, when they tried me, for they saw my work. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I would like to see you free from all worry. An unmarried man can devote himself to the Lord's affairs. All he need worry about is pleasing the Lord. But a married man has to bother about the world's affairs and devote himself to pleasing his wife. He is torn two ways. In the same way, an unmarried woman, like a young girl, can devote herself to the Lord's affairs. All she need worry about is being holy in body and spirit. The married woman, on the other hand, has to worry about the world's affairs and devote herself to pleasing her husband. I say this only to help you, not to put a halter around your necks, but simply to make sure that everything is as it should be and that you give your undivided attention to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia.
Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for revealing the mysteries of the kingdom to mere children. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went as far as Capernaum, and as soon as the Sabbath came, he went to the synagogue and began to teach. And his teaching made a deep impression on them, because, unlike the scribes, he taught them with authority. In their synagogue just then, there was a man possessed by an unclean spirit, and it shouted, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus said sharply, Be quiet, come out of him. And the unclean spirit threw the man into convulsions and with a loud cry went out of him. The people were so astonished that they started asking each other what it all meant. Here is a teaching that is new, they said, and with authority behind it. He gives orders even to unclean spirits, and they obey him. And his reputation rapidly spread everywhere through all the surrounding Galilean countryside. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. That word, authority, that we heard twice in that gospel is perhaps one that we're not that comfortable with nowadays. In this age of social media, in this age where, in a sense, almost everyone's opinion has a certain validity, when experts can be dismissed and derided, the idea of authority perhaps can seem a little bit old-fashioned, that someone or some institution can actually be able to tell us what to do. But this is exactly what Jesus manifests in this gospel, that he is that prophet prophesied by Moses in the first reading, the one who speaks the word of God with power and authority behind it. Now we see that in the response of the unclean spirit. The unclean spirit has no option except to obey the command of Jesus. This is his authority, the authority that that unclean spirit cannot ignore, cannot deny, cannot disobey. This, in a sense, is what the psalm was talking about. That unclean spirit hears the voice of God, hears the authority of God, and cannot do anything except submit to that authority. Now, of course, when we hear the voice of Jesus, when we hear his teaching, if we recognise his authority, then we've also got to accept to obey, to submit. And that is the challenge. And that's probably not just in this age. That's probably been the challenge in every single age. To let the word of Jesus, the teaching of Jesus, especially found in the scriptures, to let that impact on our lives. This is sometimes what I refer to as the, the consequence of if. The consequence of if is almost like a logical progression that we make. If something is true, then there is an inescapable consequence. I've often talked about this to people on the, the journey of faith in the RCIA. That way in which we come to faith in God by asking that question, is God real? Does God exist? If God exists, then what does that mean? What does that mean about the world in which we live, the universe that we inhabit? What does that mean for my life, for my choices? What does it mean about birth and life and death and eternity? If and consequence. There's a lovely way in which that is expressed in a poem by John Betjeman, which I'm sure you all know, his poem, Christmas. It's the one that starts off by describing all the, the secular goings on in the days before Christmas. But then, the poem sort of stops. It stops and says this, and is it true? And is it true? This most tremendous tale of all, seen in a stained glass window's hue, a baby 
in an ox's stall. The maker of the stars and sea become a child on earth for me. But it's that question, and is it true? Which Betjeman then goes on to answer in the next verse. And is it true for if it is? There's the if. If it is, then what's the consequence? Then nothing can compare with this single truth that God was man in Palestine and lives today in bread and wine. I'll put a link on the end of the video to Betjeman reading that full poem himself so you can actually hear the whole thing. But to me, that's the key thing, that question. And is it true? And if it is, then what? This is what recognising the authority of Jesus means. If Jesus is the Son of God, God made visible, God in our human flesh, then what Jesus says has to have consequences. Consequences for our lives. Consequences for our daily living and our daily choices. It's like the speed camera. You know those yellow boxes on the side of the road? One of the things that always bugs me is when people slow down just before a speed camera. Obviously, they have been speeding, but they don't want to get caught. They recognise the authority of that little yellow box. That camera, it can catch you, it can prosecute you, you can get your fine and your points on your licence. So, foot on the brake. We recognise the authority and it makes a difference to our lives, to our action. Now, what Jesus wants is for that difference to be all about charity, love, kindness, forgiveness, building the kingdom of God. That's what he uses his authority to teach, to give to us. So our job is to recognise that authority, to do the if consequence thing. If Jesus is the Son of God, if the scriptures relate what he said and what he did, if he is who we proclaim him to be, then what does that mean for me today? What does that mean for the things that I'm contemplating doing? What does it mean for my character and attitudes and choices? What does it mean for who I am and how I live? Oh, that today I would listen to his voice and harden not my heart. Now in union with the church throughout the world, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who, with the Father and the Son, is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Recognising the divine authority of Jesus, we turn to him now, offering all our prayers for the needs of the church and the world. Let us pray first for the church, especially that our leaders may manifest authenticity and true authority in their preaching and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this Racial Justice Sunday, we pray for an end to all forms of discrimination and prejudice, asking that every human being may always be recognised 
as God's work of art. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those afflicted by addiction, fear, or anxiety, that they may be set free by the power of the Lord Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those we know who need God's help at this time, remembering especially the sick, the housebound, the lonely. We pray for all those who are, de- de- who are bereaved, and we offer our prayers for all the faithful departed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For a moment or two in silence now, we think of our own prayers and the prayers that others have asked us to offer. And we ask for the prayers of Mary, our mother, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Loving Lord Jesus, help us to hear your call and to respond with generosity. May we trust our lives to you and always obey your holy word. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. i 
Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as, without end, we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that, from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Vincent, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take away the 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just once more wish everyone a very happy Sunday. I hope that this is a special Lord's Day for you, that you can find some moments of rest, some moments of prayer, some moments of peace. As the lockdown continues, obviously there is no change in our current timetable here at St Vincent's, but as always, 
we keep going in the hope and in the trust that this will not last forever and that there will be new things on the horizon. Please just continue to remember in your prayers and also with your financial support, Caritas Diocese of Salford. On our website, you can find details of how to contribute to Caritas, uh, either digitally, electronically, and on our newsletter, there's even an address to send checks to. So think of the ways in which we can support Caritas. And also today on this day of prayer for racial justice, you might also want to have a little look at the website of the Catholic Association for Racial Justice, CARJ, C-A-R-J, where they have information about the church's response to issues regarding racial justice. And also there's the opportunity to contribute to that charity and to their work. So please think of those intentions this Sunday. During this week though, let's remember the gospel and that authority of Jesus. And let's just ask ourselves, how willing are we to trust that authority of Jesus, the Son of God? Are we willing to play the if consequence game? If Jesus is the Son of God, and this is what he says, what's the consequence for my life this week, for my priorities, for my actions? Let's pray that he can help us to be the people that he wants us to be. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh.